everyone, it's Mike. I review nootropics and I talk about personal development. And during this video, we're going to talk about five nootropics that will help you to fight anxiety. So the breakdown of the video will be such that I'll review them one by one from best to worst. We'll first go over the benefits. We'll go over the dosages. I'll talk about some of the side effects and I'll as well share some information as far as my personal experience to give you some practical idea of how to use these if you do choose to use them. If you're new to the channel, then do subscribe and for everyone else, please give it a like and comment below and let's get into the video. Here's a very neat graph which shows the effectiveness of nootropics specifically on anxiety. So we can see some nootropics were very effective in fighting anxiety, whereas some nootropics actually induced anxiety. So these are five nootropics that are very effective. And as I present these nootropics to you, the great news is that many of them have benefits not only with respect to stress, but they have benefits with memory, with general cognition, learning, and more. They may not only help you to fight stress, but they'll as well help you to build your stress resilience, which in essence means that you have a better relationship to stress, you have a capacity to tolerate more stress, and this can really have a positive effect on your mindset as you'll approach your work with more excitement, more joy, and more fulfillment. And the first nootropic that is very powerful in fighting stress is ashwagandha. So what is ashwagandha? It's a herb, it's grown in India, some places in the Middle East, and some places in Africa. And it's a very popular nootropic specifically for fighting stress. Something really neat about ashwagandha is that the benefits are not exclusive to just fighting stress. There's benefits with respect to hormone regulation, weight loss, increase in testosterone, pretty much all the signs of a great nootropic. I'll point out a study right here and it was demonstrated that ashwagandha root across two servings a day was very effective in helping people's stress levels. Not any of the ashwagandha blends that are infused with black pepper extract, but the pure KSM 66, I really enjoy the powdered form. And I'm taking 300 milligrams twice per day, once in the early afternoon and once in the late afternoon. In case you're wondering why I don't take it first thing in the morning, um, the reason is because I find that ashwagandha Yes, it's great at fighting stress, although I can be somewhat lazy while taking it, whereas in the morning you want to have your priorities straight. The last thing you want to do is be lazy. You want to go after all of your goals. So I find that I like ashwagandha later in the day when I'm feeling a little bit of fatigue and I'm more likely to be somewhat stressed out from everything which happened prior in the day. However, I would just suggest that you're not close-minded to this. There's a lot of people that speak very highly about taking ashwagandha before bed to help them with sleep, but then again, there's people that find it somewhat stimulating and that it affects their sleep in a bad way. But something like two o'clock and six o'clock works well for me, and something which I notice while taking ashwagandha is I feel very present. I'm very unattached to work, and I'm more so just in a space of if things happen the way I want to, great, and if not, that's great as well, because it's really just feedback and it will help me to learn for the future. I will warn you though, if you're looking for a game changer, I wouldn't put ashwagandha in that category as ashwagandha, it'll typically take 10 to 14 days for it to start working, for it to be somewhat saturated in your system and you feeling just more present, enjoying yourself and having just a better subjective well-being. Admittedly for me, the first couple of cycles which I was taking ashwagandha, I couldn't really tell it was working, but it was just once when I removed ashwagandha from my nootropic stack that I noticed I was just a lot more stressed and I had a worse relationship to my work. It more so just felt like a little bit forced and that was when it really struck me that ashwagandha was really powerful and just making me enjoy whatever I'm engaged in. So ashwagandha, it's a great nootropic for fighting stress, but overall with respect to cognition and general health, I would rate it seven out of 10. And the reason why it's not higher is simply just because maybe it's only my experience, but I feel like a little bit lazy when I'm taking it, so I'd much rather take it later in the day. Nootropic number two would be Bacopa Minieri. This is something which I've been using for five to six years. I like it a lot. Bacopa is really neat and it's popular not only for its ability to fight stress, but there's a lot of studies showing that it improves memory. Uh, we're talking short-term memory, long-term memory, word call, learning retention. There have been studies done on not only people who are elder or have Alzheimer's or some sort of cognitive issue, but as well younger people like myself. And it showed that even with younger people, there's one study which I'll point to right here, 
which was a study in which med students were using Bacopa for a very short period of time. They were only taking 300 milligrams per day. And the study concluded that even for students in med school, Bacopa at only one serving a day was effective on improving their memory by all markers. And I can say that that's been my experience as well. I made another video on Bacopa, which I will link right here, but it's absolutely true with respect to Bacopa. A lot of people find themselves like remembering things which they haven't remembered for years. Or for students, I'm often hearing on this channel people mentioning that Bacopa is really helping them with their grades. So this is something which you can say makes Bacopa different than ashwagandha in that ashwagandha seems great for overall health. So this is a key distinction between Bacopa and between ashwagandha in that with ashwagandha, you're likely to have benefits with stress and you're likely to have benefits with body composition. With ashwagandha, there's a lot of people who aspire to have a better physique take ashwagandha um, as people want to naturally have more muscle and decrease their body. Whereas Bacopa, you wouldn't necessarily put it in that category of nootropics that would help you to build a better physique, but more so just cognitive benefits, things like memory, fighting stress, subjective well-being, or the elimination or reduction in any depressive symptoms. There's a lot of different ways you can take Bacopa. There's the Synapsa, there's the Bacognize, but it's been my experience that the brand, the vendor didn't really matter too much. I pretty much found all forms be effective. For me, you can just call me highly sensitive to nootropics because Bacopa is something which I take and I immediately feel like more present. I feel like I'm just so aware of all my surroundings. Currently, the type that I'm taking is the Bacognize. I'm taking 300 milligrams in the early afternoon and 300 milligrams in the late afternoon, similar to how I'm taking ashwagandha. So I'm liking the Bacognize, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's better than the Synapsa. Both of them seem to be the most popular. I've pretty much noticed the same thing on both. But then again, you can just call me somebody that is highly sensitive to nootropics because there's something about Bacopa that every single brand I've taken it with, I feel it. Like I feel it instantly. Not like ashwagandha, Bacopa, Upon ingestion, I immediately just feel present. I'm so aware of all my surroundings and you can very clearly tell that the stuff is working. So for you, it may not be as effective, but after a couple of weeks of use, you'll likely notice Bacopa working even if you do miss a dose or you miss a day of use. Side effects are such that some people feel fatigued and again, like ashwagandha, some people feel lazy. Myself, a little bit included. I wouldn't say it's defected my libido that much, but some users of Bacopa Minieri say that it negatively affects their libido. I bring up these side effects because they're just things you should watch out for, but they're really not that likely. Most people don't notice them. And of course, if you do, then you can choose whether or not to move forward and still incorporate it in your stack from there. Because of that side effect, that little drawback, I wouldn't say Bacopa is the best thing for social anxiety, but more so just if you have an anxiety with overthinking, you seem to overcomplicate things. You seem to have a tendency to make problems bigger in your mind than they actually are. Uh, that's something where Bacopa can really help you, really just help slow down your mind to some extent. So although in my opinion, ashwagandha is better for fighting stress and anxiety than Bacopa, I would rate Bacopa 8 out of 10 just because I really like some of the other benefits I get from it. I get the memory boost and I like that immediate effect that I take upon ingestion. Nootropic number three would be lion's mane. This is the eight to one mushroom extract. Boy, there are so many benefits of lion's mane. If we were to talk about them, we would be here forever. So I'll keep it short and sweet. But if you wanna learn more about lion's mane, I've made a comprehensive video about it, which I will link over here. So what the benefits are, are not only used to fight stress and anxiety, but I find it naturally just makes you more curious. There's evidence showing that it helps BDNF, which is brain derived nootrophic factor, in essence means making you smarter. A lot of users of Lion's Mane report that it really does help to reduce any depressive symptoms they may have, like something like anhedonia. Anhedonia means a loss of interest in things that will typically interest you. A lot of users report that Lion's Mane is very effective. And that's been my experience as well. It's a great nootropic as it's something you can take on your days on work and your days off work. Because even when you're not working, if you have more interest in things, you're more willing to do things out of your comfort zone and it can just set you up for having an overall great day. Just through browsing studies on Lion's Mane, it became very clear that the people who were most likely to notice Lion's Mane working were people who worked a lot of hours. So you can make the argument that Lion's Mane is something that's appropriate if you have like a project or you have some sort of deadline, maybe a sales quota, where you naturally just have to work more and work more hours. If you were to ask about the proper dosage, this is my favorite form. It's the eight to one mushroom extract. I'm using 300 milligrams three times per day. So that's once in the morning, pre-workout, 
once in the early afternoon and once in the late afternoon. So that early afternoon and late afternoon serving, I'm as well having with Bacopa and Ashwagandha. It's not been my experience that it induces any sort of like laziness or fatigue that I do sometimes experience with Ashwagandha or Bacopa. So that's one reason why I really like taking it pre-workout as well as it seems to aid my focus to some extent. And you'll see this if you browse across some popular pre-workouts. This is becoming a known phenomenon that they're adding lion's mane to their blends. So I like it at 300 milligrams three times a day. I will point out Lion's Mane, it is a nootropic in which the vendor and the brand does matter to some extent. So I would encourage you to do your research before going and getting a product. Make sure it's something which you know has good reviews and you can have a positive experience with. As I've read about some funny experiences, but my favorite again, it's the eight to one mushroom extract. The one to one mushroom extract, that's also very popular, but I don't find it as effective. Whereas with the eight to one, I immediately notice it working pretty much. However, after reading about people's experiences with this on Reddit or on Quora, it's quite clear that with Lion's Mane, they're either getting it from the wrong vendor or they're just taking it at the wrong dosage or with the wrong frequency. For instance, some people are just taking one gram in the morning, which I think is not only a high dose, but it should be spread out throughout the whole day. Of course, as always, be responsible. If you do choose to introduce a nootropic to your stack, then talk to your GP one-on-one -on -one about it first, see if it makes sense, and be sure that you do start off with a very low dose if you do choose to take it to assess your tolerance. My experience with Lion's Mane, it's been phenomenal. I've never taken a nootropic that I actually notice can somewhat shift my perspective and make me more interested in things. I really just enjoy being on it so much more. It's something different than the other nootropics as like, other nootropics will do things like improve your focus or they will make you work faster or you'll be able to fight stress or decrease your stress levels throughout your work. Whereas Lion's Mane, you just have a completely different perspective. It's like you're almost a new person to some extent. That's been my experience. Hey, it may sound a little bit far-fetched, but Lion's Mane is one of the few nootropics that I noticed working very, very quickly. I found myself just more interested in people. I would ask people questions that I would usually never have a tendency to ask. I'd wanna know more about them and even things that they were involved with. So some of you may experience that too, but I will point out that if you're taking a lot of stimulants or drinking a lot of coffee, then the effects of Lion's Mane will not be as noticeable. However, Lion's Mane, it's a great nootropic. It's been good to me and I would rate it 10 out of 10. Practically every time I take it out of my nootropic stack because maybe I convince myself it's too expensive, I always just end up putting it back in my stack and that speaks for itself. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to subscribe, give it a like, comment, and follow me on Patreon if you want to talk one-on-one. -on -one. And let's get into nootropic number four. And nootropic number four is Rhodiola Rosea. This is a nootropic that I first tried about 10 years ago. I bought the capsules from the store and I was so sad because I couldn't afford to buy it. It was so effective, but I just didn't have the money for it. It was like a $40 bottle, but now I'm taking it every single day. Rhodiola rosea, it's a great tool for fighting stress. Like Rhodiola rosea, I like to think of it as pretty much like taking a nap. This is a nap in a pill or a nap in a powder. So it's like a reset. It helps you focus and have nice subtle transitions between tasks. So like a practical way of taking Rhodiola Rosea is one in which you maybe had something bad take place in the day. You just want to forget about it. You want to move forward. You'll find that you could take some Rhodiola Rosea and like immediately you're in a really good mood and that seems to last for a good two to three hours. If you're wondering what form of Rhodiola Rosea is my personal favorite, and again, I use these nootropics every single day. Um, my preferred way of taking it is the 3% Salidroside, although I've taken various forms of Rhodiola Rosea. I've not found them to be too different. So if you have other forms of it, I wouldn't discourage you from taking it. The dosage of Rhodiola Rosea that I'm taking is 250 milligrams twice per day. I like it once in the early afternoon and once in the late afternoon. So similar to Ashwagandha and Bacopa, that's where I fit those adaptogens. Although there's a lot of Rhodiola Rosea users that take it in the morning. So that works for them. A lot of people report having good energy levels throughout the whole day because that's how it's been effective for me. But there are some users that say that Rhodiola Rosea was only effective after like two weeks of use and then using it every day there afterwards. But again, maybe me, I'm just sensitive to nootropics. But the first time I took Rhodiola, it was very clear. Not only is it mentally stimulating, but physically stimulating as well. Rhodiola Rosea was probably the first adaptogen that I started taking. So prior to Bacopa, Ashwagandha, Lion's Mane, I took Rhodiola Rosea. I rank it as number four just because it's not as effective for fighting stress and anxiety. And I really like the physical benefits that I don't get too much from the other adaptogens that I've discussed. Overall, I would rate Rhodiola Rosea a nine out of 10. 
It's effective for me. I can tell it's working. I could tell it was working pretty much from the first time that I took it. And it's been my experience that it's a great tool to use on those long work days. You can just get through them faster with less stress and enjoy them being a more resourceful state throughout. If you were to ask about the side effects, it's not so common with rhodiola rosea. There's the odd person that may feel somewhat fatigued after taking it or a bit lethargic. But again, this isn't too frequent and one can make the argument that they could just be taking the wrong brand or could have not dosed it properly. And nootropic number five would be aniracetam. Aniracetam, it's not necessarily a supplement you would call naturally occurring. Most people take it to get some sort of edge, better memory, better focus, concentration, motivation, energy levels, and all that. And I do find that aniracetam though, has some really good effects when it comes to stress and anxiety. More so though for like social anxiety. For me, I'm in sales, so I have to be in conversations every single day. And I find that with the use of time, I'm just easily able to make that phone call or go to that meeting. There's less anxiety, I'm overthinking a lot less, and I'm just more present in the meeting and maybe not wondering what the heck to say next. So time, it's very effective that way. Like the other four nootropics are more so useful for like general stress, general anxiety. But if you're talking about like social anxiety specifically, or if you find it like very stressful to introduce yourself to somebody, that's where anorastam can be very, very powerful. Dosage, it's a little bit tricky with anorastam. You find that you need to take it with a choline source in order to get the most out of anorastam because with anorastam and all the racetams in that nootropic class, they pretty much just use more choline. So you need to replenish your choline stores. And the practical way of doing so is with choline rich foods like egg yolks or the more practical way is using a choline source. But in my opinion, a more practical way is through supplementing with choline. And there's pretty much three ways you can go about that. You can supplement with choline by tartrate, you can supplement with CDP choline, or you can supplement with alpha GPC. Alpha GPC is my favorite. I've made a video on it, which is quite comprehensive, which I will link over here. And these two nootropics together like anorastam and a choline source they're very effective. You'll need to be a little bit more patient with anorastam unlike the other four nootropics in that it will take a lot of users about three weeks to start working. Some users report feeling it working after 14 days, but the practical way of doing so is which you're taking anorastam along with choline twice or three times a day. And then afterwards, once it's somewhat saturated in your system, you can afford to miss a dose or maybe even miss a day of use and still find that the benefits are manifesting. Dosage, I'm taking it three times per day. Some users report the same benefits from taking it two times a day. Two to three times a day, I don't think it matters that much. With this nootropic, timing isn't so important. You don't have to particularly take it like first thing in the morning or at four o'clock. More so just consistency, making sure that you don't miss doses in your first few weeks. And then again, be patient with it. A lot of people don't even notice time working or they have to cycle it two to three times and then wow, they find it working. So it's a subtle, but it's a noticeable effect and you'll especially find it working if you're somebody like myself that is just talking to people all day. How would I rate time? Six out of 10, maybe a seven out of 10. Just the only problem with time is that there's not much research done on it. Therefore, I am still somewhat concerned about the long-term effects of it. But that being said, I've been taking time for years. I haven't really noticed anything bad from it, not any brain fog, not any headaches. So I like it a lot and I'm going to continue using it. If you're wondering about the side effects and this not only goes with time, but the other racetams as well, like Paracetam, Oxyracetam, and Pramaracetam, some users report a little brain fog or some headaches, but it's likely that they're not taking enough choline. That was my experience when I first started using the Rastams. I had a little bit of headaches here and there, but then when I started adding choline to the mix, it was like all my nootropics work better, specifically the racetams, and those headaches were pretty much gone. Hey, what nootropic am I missing from this list? I wanna see that in the comment section below. Give it a like guys, and for those of you that are new to my channel, I appreciate your support. And do subscribe if you wanna see more. I post two videos every week, and I also have live streams on the page. And if you really wanna learn everything you can about nootropics, then do follow me on Patreon, where we can talk one-on-one -on -one there as well. And I've also posted in the description box below some links to nootropics, which I'm personally taking. It's Michael Dougal, and I look forward to seeing you all next time.